2001 Infinity QX4 the same I believe for the Nissan Pathfinder with the 3.5 engine we're gonna do the radiator you can see that it's leaking from here all the way down so we start from everything we see from the top and work our way down there are hoses attachments that have to be removed so we start from here on the top first take this bridge out and one on the other side and uh, work the way downwards remove the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the bracket remove the bracket there's one bracket there's the other bracket now you can see the radiator is loose so let's remove some things from another radiator the next thing we'll work on is to move the upper hose anything attaches to the fan cover shroud and uh, once we remove the shroud we can see what's holding the radiator below okay we'll remove the two brackets upper hose and now we're removing the we'll try to separate the radiator from the shroud or fan cover it's a 10 millimeter bolt one on this side and one on the other so hopefully when we get this uh, bolts out it'll be easier to see oh well, there it goes it already separates itself so far it's the easiest radiator in the world i think it's already out what i gotta do is uh, go under and uh, disconnect uh, i believe there are two hoses for the cooler for the transmission and the lower hose for the engine and on the top we all set it's already you can see it's already moving and we only separate the two brackets and uh, two more 10 millimeter bolts on the side here for this route okay now we're under the car we remove the lower hose from the radiator let it drain uh, what is left is this two hose the two lines for the transmission so the radiator on the bottom has no bolts so all you gotta do is just lift you can see it it comes right off so i'm gonna disconnect the two lines right now and i believe the radiator is ready to come out okay trying to remove the radiator i have to separate the shroud because the lower part of the hose on the radiator it, it doesn't go through unless i force it this route here the fan cover is two parts the inner parts and if you can get those clips out like here then the radiator will come out into the fan shroud will come out in two pieces this is what it looks like when it's in it's just a little snapping you just snap this thing here and once you separate this part the front part comes right out so there's the shroud and that's what it looks like without it this is the inner piece or lower piece of the shroud is still in the car you don't have to remove that but the radiator as you can tell it went out even by itself it fell out so just gotta move the hose out of the way and just lift the radiator to come out i'm working with one hand try to video the other side so at this point i just want to use both of my hands and lift the radiator out Okay, we just got the radiator, it came through the mail. I'll check it out to make sure that all the fittings are correct. Radiator goes up, down, and these fittings. So this is the same radiator, so let's proceed and install. Okay, so the radiator is very simple. At this point, we just dropped it in, and now we're gonna install these brackets. There you go, one 10 millimeter bolt here, try to hold it in place, and now, almost there, one more bracket on this side, and I'm going to try to secure the radiator first this time without um, remo 
install the fence route. So let's see. When I took it out, I took it out the fence route first and then the radiator. But the radiator is very secure at this point. We we'll have to connect the upper radiator hose and tighten the nuts from there, from here. And the lower hose from the thermostat housing down below. And one hose up here. Well, we enter the car, make sure the radiator is goes where it was supposed to go. You can see the space like that. The other one is under as well. The radiator is in place. On the top of the radiator, we have uh, here, I said another 10 millimeter for the cover. And the one on the other side here. And the radiator cover is done. Okay, we we'll under the car and uh, you can see that the radiator is in place, it fits right in here. Now the plastic cover or shroud, it has two spaces in here, you have to guide it through here. Once you guide it through here, there you go, that's one, then you know you're in place. And the other side, that's in place as well. Okay, so the only thing remains now is to install the other half on the bottom for the uh, cover for the radiator and the fan cover, the transmission lines and the lower holes for the coolant here, two fittings and the uh, radiator is done. Everything is secure, the shroud is in, uh, now I'm we'll going to fill the system with the coolant. with the plastic cover so make sure these pins are installed down here on the bottom of the radiator and the two screws on the top are 10 millimeters and lift the entire unit like so and drop it in uh, that way you're protecting the radiator and uh, all you gotta do is uh, install the other half uh, which is this piece here and it hooks on from the bottom. Just punch it in. And um, it has a little clip in here that will fit on the bottom of the cover. There you go. And uh, there's the other side. And that's what it looks like. So. The correct coolant for this car is green, but not the regular green, but it's a darker green. And you can see I got this from Motozone, Asian vehicles, green, and it has the Nissan Infinity all on it. Uh, it's, uh, it needs to you have to add the water, 50-50. This is about $24 from Motozone, uh, so you can make eight quarts out of it. You have to use distilled water to mix it and um, the dealer has it pedosin is the keyword right here the dealer has it for 23 dollars when i call them but it's already pre-diluted so you probably need the same thing you need about eight quarts so i got this from autozone which is the same thing and i can make out of one i can make two save some money it's okay uh, if you'd like to go to the dealer, go ahead, you need about 8 quarts, or I think you need 9 if you clean the reservoir, which I did, flush it out. So, about 9 quarts altogether. Engine and do the bleeding back of the engine. This there, the plastic of my finger points, is the bleeder screw or pipe. You have to bleed the system. Uh, just run the engine for a little while, take the cap off, fill up the radiator, the reservoir, 
that on the edge a little higher at 2,000 RPM, you're gonna see air bubbles coming out. And when is the air bubbles stop coming and just flows coolant, put the cap back on. You cool it again the next couple of days after you drive in the car, make sure it stays up. And the coolant tank where it says maximum is supposed to be down there. So after that, the car is perfect. Okay, we start the engine. Um, so everything is back together. The reservoir tank is where it's supposed to be at maximum. This is full and um, turn the kit around, let the car out to warm up, and give the low RPM and some air will come out. Give the low RPM, look what happened back there. The air coming out. It's good. When you do a steady flow, then you put the cap on it. Still has air packets inside, so I'm going to keep on doing it until I see steady, steady steam of coolant coming out, then I'm going to put the cap on it. 